I would like to thank uh, all of the, the brothers and sisters involved in having this lecture come and these beautiful programs. May Allah reward you and reward everyone that's involved in this beautiful uh, initiative. So Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, uh, we are blessed to be Muslims. We are Muslims. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us. And Allah has blessed us with Islam. Allah has blessed us with Iman. Allah has blessed us with the Quran. And Alhamdulillah, we have entered uh, the new year of the Islamic calendar. We're in the year uh, 1442. And we are in the month of Muharram. We are in the month of Muharram. So I would like to just remind myself first and foremost and everyone here about some of the, the virtues of this blessed month of Muharram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah At-Tawbah, إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرُضِ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمُ فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ The months of Allah are twelve. إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The day Allah created the heavens and the earth, Allah is the one that subjected the year to become twelve months. مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ Four of the months are sacred. Four of the months are sacred. ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ القيم. This is uh, the correct religion. فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا Do not harm yourselves, especially in these sacred months. So Muharram is one of the four sacred months of the year. Muharram is one of the four sacred months of the year. So when a month, when a month is sacred, uh, also this was something that pre-Islamic times, they used to honor these months. These sacred months, uh, there are months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he talks about the, the virtues of the month of, of Muharram, he said, أَفْضَلُ السِّيَامِ بَعْضَ رَمَضَانِ شَهْرُ اللَّهِ الْمُحَرَّمِ The best fasting that is done after the month of Ramadan is the month of Allah, Muharram. So Muharram is one of four sacred months. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us how what are these four months Allah mentions in Surah At-Tawbah? He said, there are three months that are consecutive. The 11th month, Dhul-Qa'dah, the 12th month, which is the month of Hajj, Dhul-Hijjah, and Muharram, and he said Rajab. These are the four sacred months. So the actions that are done in these months that are sacred, Allah will reward you more. But also the sins that are done in these months, it is also greater in, in terms of the, the, the amount of you know, sins you will get based on what you have done in the month of, of these sacred months. So what should we do in, in the sacred months of, of Muharram? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ Do not harm yourselves in these special months. These are the months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen. And this is the first month in the Islamic year, the Islamic calendar. The Islamic calendar, we follow the, the lunar calendar. Lunar calendar means that the month is based on the moon. So the month is either 29 or 30 days. So in about a year, you have about 354, 353 days, depending on which months are completed. Unlike the Gregorian calendar, most of the people, especially in the West, we follow the Gregorian calendar. In the Gregorian calendar, it is based on the, it's a solar calendar. And a difference is that in the Gregorian calendar, the year is 365 days. In the Islamic calendar, the most it can become is 360, but most of the months do not complete. So you always find a variance of about 15 or 10 or 12 days. That's why you find every single year Ramadan is changing. 
it, it will change about 14 or, or 12 days. So this is some of the differences that we find uh, between the two calendars that, that we follow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in this month, what should we do in the month of Muharram? And I want this to be an introduction for us before we get to our topic of connecting uh, the hearts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because we are in this month, let's take advantage, inshallah, of, of some of the blessings of, of this month. So the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the month of Muharram, there is a special day. It is called the day of Ashura. Ashura refers to the 10th of the month. So we are encouraged to fast the 10th of Muharram, which is, which is the day that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that it is a day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, gave salvation and victory to Prophet Musa alayhi salam over Pharaoh and his, and his army. فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ When the two uh, groups met, the, the companions of Musa, they were very scared. And he said, قَالَ كَلَّا إِنَّ مَعِي رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ My Lord is with me. So during this day is a day of uh, virtue for the, for the believers. For this reason, we should fast the month, the day of Ashura. And the Messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, سِيَامُ يَوْمَ عَشُورَ Fast in the day of Ashura, inni ahtasibu ala Allahi an yukafira sanata allati qablaha. If you fast the day of Ashura, which is the 10th of Muharram, if you fast the day of Ashura, which is the 10th of Muharram, I anticipate that Allah will forgive my sins from the previous years. Just a few weeks ago, we fasted the day of Arafah, the day of Arafah, and that the day of Arafah, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about the day of Arafah, مَنْ صَامَ يَوْمَ عَرَفَةَ غُفِرُ لَهُ سَنَةٌ أَمَامَهُ وَسَنَةٌ خَلْفَهُ The day of Arafah, which is the ninth of the Hijjah, if you fast that day, then you find that uh, there's a benefit of the sins will be forgiven for the year that's coming and the year that, that passed. So Ashura, brothers and sisters, let's take advantage of uh, the great reward of fasting uh, the day of Ashura, which is the tenth of Muharram and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that if I were to live for the year that's coming I would fast I would fast I would fast on the 9th so it is recommended that you either fast the 9th and the 10th or the 10th and the 11th you should fast those two days so this was just an introduction for us just to remind myself first and foremost and my brothers and sisters in Islam of the importance of fasting the day of Ashura inshallah Let's remind our, ourselves, let's remind our families, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَنْ دَلَّ عَلَى الْخَيْرِ وَأَدَّالُ عَلَى الْخَيْرِ كَفَاعِلِهِ The one who invites someone to do good, it is like you have done it yourself. So imagine you remind 10, ten people about fasting the day of Ashura. Whatever reward they get, you would get as well. Whatever the word that they get, you would get as as well. But as for the topic that I wanted to discuss in detail is uh, the importance of uh, connecting our hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart is a very important organ. It pumps so many gallons of blood. It beats over 100,000 times. The heart is very important for us. And it is the heart where the person, their drive, their intentions, their outlook in life, it comes from the heart. And that's why in Islam, there is such an important emphasis of purifying the heart, purifying the soul. Qad aflaha man zakaha. Allah says, Qad aflaha man zakaha. The one who purifies, the one who purifies their heart will be successful. The one who purifies their nafs will be successful. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he said that, he said, truly, in the body, there is an organ. If this organ is salih, if the organ is in good condition, if the organ is in good situation, then salih al kullu. The rest of the body will be in a good health. But if this organ is not, it is not in a good condition, this will ruin this will ruin the entire body. Allah al qalb. He said, indeed, it is the heart. How is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are our hearts connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We live in a society today 
where many people, the, the importance is given to the physical body. Yes, you should be healthy, you should exercise, you should watch what you eat. This is all something Islam encourages. But how about our spiritual body, our spiritual soul, our heart? What condition is our heart in? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِخَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ The day that يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Your wealth will not benefit you. Your children will not benefit you. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ Except for the one who comes to Allah بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ With a sound heart. With a healthy heart. With a heart that is purified. This is the one that will be successful in Yom al Qiyamah. So we need to be aware of the condition of our heart. We need to be aware. And how do we rectify our heart? How do we purify our heart? How do we connect our hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is something of the most important uh, points that we need to address and to learn. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is a hadith in Sahih Muslim where he said that إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ Allah does not look at your physical bodies. وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَمْوَالِكُمْ Allah does not look at your wealth. So Allah will not look at your physical body, who is strong and who is weak, who is tall, who is short, who is fair skin, who is dark skin. Allah does not look at that. وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَمْوَالِكُمْ Allah does not look at your wealth, who is rich, who is poor. Allah does not look at the amount of money you have in your bank account. وَلَكِنْ But Allah looks at وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ خُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ But Allah looks at your hearts and your deeds. Allah looks at your hearts. Is your heart قَلْبٌ سَلِيمٌ is your heart like the heart of the prophets? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِخَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ From those who follow Nuh alayhi salam was Ibrahim, he came to Allah بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ So what is قَلْبٌ سَلِيمٍ? So Allah does not look at your physical bodies because Allah is the one that gave you your body. Allah is the one that made you... Uh, stronger or Allah is the one that made you tall or short Allah does not also look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not also look at Allah does not look at Allah does not look at your wealth Allah is the one that gave you wealth you don't control your wealth nor do you control your physical body you don't control that this is something you're given that's why in Islam the answer to racism is very simple Allah addresses it ya ayyuha nasu إِنَّ خَلَقَنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَىٰ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَدْقَاكُمْ Allah tells us. So in Islam, there is no... The, the racism doesn't exist. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا We made you into nations. وَقَبَائِلًا We made you into tribes. For what reason? So you may know one another. There isn't a caste system, depending on what family you're from, or depending on what nation you're from. Allah says, "Inna akramakum in the Allahi adqaqum." The most virtuous of people in the sight of Allah are those that have the most taqwa. And taqwa, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "At-taqwa ha huna." Taqwa is in the heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your wealth. Allah does not look at your physical bodies. But what does Allah look at? Allah looks at your hearts. Is your prayer truly for Allah? Is your zakah truly for Allah? Are you truly making hajj for Allah? Are you truly doing things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّةِ Actions are, are based on intentions. Actions are based on intentions. So let's look at our hearts. What are we? Why are we doing this? And today we live in a time that many of us, uh, we may not gain the reward because of our intentions. Some of us, we find that you should have some ibadah, some type of worship 
only Allah knows. Don't tell anyone this. Sometimes you, you tell people, I have prayed Qiyam al-Layl today, that's why I'm tired. There's no need for anyone to know that you pray Qiyam al-Layl. You have to have some type of uh, ibadah, sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah says, Allah lillah dinul qalis. Indeed, uh, the religion is sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, the religion is sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ They were not commanded except for to worship Allah sincerely. So we must verify that our hearts, our intentions are pure. And Allah also looks at your actions. Is the act I'm doing, is this from the way of the Prophet Wasallam? Is this amalun salih? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَ Those who have a faith, and they have good deeds. So faith and good deeds are always connected, are always connected in, in, in our religion. Having a good faith, faith is in the heart. Having good deeds, good deeds are deeds that are legislated by Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us of these two matters. We have to look at our heart. We have to make sure our hearts are pure. And that based on the, the level of faith that you have, you're elevated in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna akramakum inda Allahi adkhalkum. That's so when the companions, when the companions, they ask the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, oh, oh ya Rasulullah, from the children of Adam, who are the best people? Who are the best people in the sight of Allah? He said, alayhi salatu wa salam, adkhalkum, those who have the most fear of Allah, the most taqwa of Allah. Then the companions they said, "No, Ya Rasulullah, we're talking about in terms of, uh, in terms of lineage. Who, who is the who has the best lineage?" Then he said, "In terms of lineage, the best person is Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf, who is the son of a prophet, who is the son of a prophet, and who is the son of the friend of Allah subhanahu wa taala, Ibrahim. So Yusuf alayhi salam, he is the son of Yaqub, who is the son of Ishaq." who is the son of Ibrahim, alayhim salam So Yusuf and the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, informed them, but he first said, Adqaqum, those who have the most fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now the heart, perhaps our hearts may become sick. In the Quran, there are many, many ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of there are people that their hearts are sick. Allah says, Fi khulubihim marad. In their hearts there is a disease And Allah increased this disease So having the diseases of the heart Having envy Being jealous of people Lying Cheating Backbiting These are all from the diseases of the heart That we have to purify We must purify consistently uh, The diseases of the heart And that know that many people Many people what, why are you jealous? Ask yourself. There's no need to be jealous of anyone because Allah is the one that gave this person children. Allah is the one that gave this person a beautiful wife or a beautiful husband. Allah is the one that made this person rich. So as a believer, if your faith is strong, you know for a fact that everything that happened is by the qadr of Allah and there is no need to be jealous of anyone because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah kulli shay. Allah is the creator of all things. That's why having a strong faith, having a strong faith, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you overcome the diseases that we have in our hearts. There's no need to be jealous of anyone. To understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created everything. Allah azza wa jal is the one that gave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is the one that gives the kingdom to whomever he wants. There's no reason to be jealous. But ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to have more children, this is something which is normal. Ask Allah. Your Lord said, call upon me and I shall answer you. There is no need to be jealous of anyone. These are all the diseases of the heart. How do we overcome it? What, what is the cure? How do we overcome the diseases that we have in our hearts? And know that it is because of the disease of the heart that destroyed Iblis. Iblis, he was jealous of Adam. He became arrogant. 
فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Allah commanded all the angels, all the inhabitants of Jannah, اسجدوا لآدم, make sujood to Adam. فَسَجَدُوا the Omid sujood, إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ except for Iblis. Aba he refused. وَاسْتَكْبَرَ he became arrogant. وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِ he became from the, the non-believers. So the original sin of Iblis, Satan, was because of a sick heart. Satan had a sick heart. He said, how can I, I'm made from fire. How could I make sujood to Adam? Adam is made from dirt. He's made from clay. He's made from dust. And that's what he told Allah. Ana khayrun minhu. I am better than him. خَلَقَتَنِي مِنْ نَارِ You created me from fire. وَخَلَقَتُهُ مِنْ تِينَ And you created him from clay. I am better than him. Because he was arrogant. Many of the problems that we have today is because of the diseases of our heart. We have to rectify our hearts. And know that when your heart, alhamdulillah, is clean, qalbun salim. Qalbun salim. What does Qalbun Salim mean? Qalbun Salim is a person that says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Qalbun Salim is a person when something happens to them When a calamity happens to them Alladheena idha asabathum musiba When those, when a calamity befalls on them How do they react? When you get a call And someone calls you and tells you yeah, yeah, Your mother passed away Your father passed away your child got into a car accident on the highway. How do you react? If your heart is not salim, if your heart does not have faith in Allah, you will say things that are incorrect. You will say things that will get you in trouble in this world in the akhirah. musiba. <laughs> Those when calamity befalls them. Qalu they say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. This is Qalbun Salim. They say we come from Allah and we'll go back to Allah. This beautiful child that you have with you that passed away in a car accident, know that Allah gave you this child and Allah took back the child. Do not say why. Do not question Allah's qadr. Do not say why me. Do not say, do not say if, if only my son did not go out. If only my mom did not leave me. If, do not say if. If will open the doors of shaytan. فَإِنَّ اللَّوْ تَفْتَحْ عَمَلَ الشَّيْطَانِ This is the Prophet ﷺ. So don't ever say if. Don't ever say if. Don't ever question Allah's don't qadr. Question Allah's qadr. Many of us, Many we look at our lives and we compare it to other people. Alhamdulillah, I, I went to school. I, I got a degree. But I can't find a job. And this other brother did not go to college. But mashallah, he has a big business now. He's making a lot of money. He's very wealthy. She's very wealthy. Why? Don't question that. Allah is the one that gives risk. Provision, money, children, wealth does not come because of our own actions. It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we take the means. Yes, we go to school. We try hard. If you want children, you get married. But in the end of the day, you leave it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alladheena, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sabirin, give the good news. Alladheena, idha asabatuhum musiba, those when a calamity befalls them, qalu inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. They say that we come from Allah and we'll go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to be patient in the beginning. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to one of the mothers who lost their children and she was weeping and she was crying and she was crying and she and this is normal she was crying and she was weeping and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to her be patient be patient inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun have sabr have iman she said to him leave me alone i'm right now i'm going through pain i'm going through uh, right now a crisis i'm going through a calamity leave me alone then they said, they said to the woman, do you know who this man is? This is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She didn't recognize it was a him. Then she felt so bad. She felt so bad. She felt so embarrassed. How do you tell the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, leave me alone? 
Then she went to the Prophet's house, alayhi She said, oh, Messenger of Allah, forgive me. I'm very sorry. I had no idea. He said, no. He said, innama sabra. You have to be patient in the beginning of the calamity. Okay? So when you lose your mother or you lose your father, at that time, you say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. There's no reason to scream and to yell and to break everything in the house and to ask why, why. Don't ask why. Allah knows why you do not know. Don't do not ask, do not ever judge Allah's qadr. Perhaps this is good for you. Some things that you dislike, it is actually good for you. But you do not know. But that's why as a Muslim, what does Islam even mean? It means submit. Islam means submission. So whatever happens to you, in the end of the day, you, you become submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to be patient. And this is from the heart, which is salim. The heart, which is very sound. The heart, which has iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not, do not, we have to be very mindful of the state of our heart. So what is the cure of the heart? How do we purify? How do we purify? And how do we cure our heart? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ We reveal from the Qur'an, مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ What is a healing? The Qur'an is shifa. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِذَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ Allah says we brought down what is a shifa in the hearts. Sometimes you're a human being. We all go through some type of depression. Depression again is a disease of the heart. You feel depressed. You feel sad. You feel lonely. You feel lazy. You have to go back and read the Qur'an. The Qur'an, if you read the Qur'an and ask yourself, sometimes, even when it comes to our children, let's turn on the Qur'an in the house. Just turn the Qur'an on. You can go to YouTube, turn the Qur'an on. You should have, if you go to one of the websites, if you have any type of audio devices in the house, turn the Qur'an on, you will find that you feel the sakina. You feel the sakina. Sakina is tranquility. Just turn it on. When you're driving to work, brothers and sisters, I challenge myself and you. When you go on, just turn the Quran on. You just feel good. You feel, mashallah, this is the sakina. Sakina is a tranquility. The Quran has that. Ask yourself, the day you don't read the Quran, you feel, you feel as if you are stressed. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمٌ the Qur'an is the ultimate, it is the ultimate source of happiness. It is the ultimate source that you find of having tranquility. And that the Qur'an, it may be hard for you to read the Qur'an, learn the Qur'an. Do your best. Do not let shaitan trick you by saying, well, I can't read the Qur'an, the Qur'an is hard for me. No, do your best. The Messenger وسلم, he also gave us a good news. He said, Al-Mahir bil Qur'ani the one who is proficient in reading the Qur'an will be with the ranks of the angels. Will be with the ranks of the angels. But the one who reads the Qur'an and ha they have difficulty in reading the Qur'an you will get two rewards. One for reading, one for trying. Imagine this. So you get double the reward if you have difficulty in reading the Qur'an. You will get double the reward if you have difficulty in reading the Qur'an. One for trying and one for reading. This is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. Don't ever feel like, well, I am right now, I am 30 years old. I am 40 years old. I am 50 years old. I, don't, I cannot read the Qur'an. Look at the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa The companions... Learn the Qur'an. What is your relationship with the Qur'an? Challenge yourself. I'm telling you, the house in the household that the Qur'an is not played is a household that is chaotic. The household that is wild. Everything is going on. The children do not listen to you. You're having problems with your husband. You're having problems with your wife. 
Why? Because this house is missing the Quran. It is missing tranquility. It is missing the Sakina. This we need. So the Quran is the number one way of purifying and having a heart which is Qalbun Salim. A heart which is sound. A heart which is pure. And that the more faith you have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the second way of having a, how, how do you connect your hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is by learning. It is by learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدُعُوهُ بِهَا To Allah belongs the most beautiful names and attributes. Call Him by it. قُلِ ادْعُوا اللَّهَ أَوْ ادْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ أَيَّمْ مَا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Call upon Allah, call upon Rahman. To Him belongs the most beautiful names. You ask Allah. You learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is Al-Hakim. Learn the names of Allah. Understand them. Inna lillahi to Allah belongs 99 names. Man ahsaha wa fi riwaya man hafidhaha. Whosoever learns these names. Whosoever memorizes these names. Whosoever preserves these names. Whosoever acts upon these names. دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ وِتْرٌ يُحِبُّ الْوِتْرِ Will enter Jannah. One of the easiest ways of entering Jannah is to learn Allah's names and attributes. Learn Allah's names. Understand that He is Al-Hakim. So even if something does not make sense to you, even if you lost your job, okay? You are, mashallah, you're a good nurse, you're an engineer, you are an accountant, everybody likes you at work. On Friday, your manager said, you lost your job because of COVID-19, because of the cutbacks. As a Muslim, how do you respond to this? If you know Allah is Al-Hakim, the most wise. If you know Allah is Al-Latif, Al-Khabir, you know Allah will not let you down. Allah will not let you down. Allah will not let you down. You know that, you say, Qadrullah wa ma This is the Qadr of Allah. I did my best at work. But Allah decreed that this job will end today. So you're not worried. You're actually happy because Allah will give you a new opportunity. Some people, if their faith is not strong, they lose their job. They go, they act in a way of madness. Some people even try to hurt their employer. But as Muslims, we don't do that. As Muslims, we say, Qadrullah wa ma sha'a fa'al. This is the Qadr of Allah. Alhamdulillah, you say, ala kulli had. This is how learning about Allah's names it will benefit you in your life. To learn about the, uh, the, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also to learn about the seerah of the prophets. To learn about the seerah of the prophets. To learn about the seerah of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How in times of difficulty, like Musa alayhi salam said, Inna Rabbi ma'i sayahdeen. My Lord is with me. Allah will not let me down today. When Pharaoh came, when the two groups came together, the companions of Moses said, we're, we're, we're finished today. Today we're done. He said, no, we're not. I have Allah. Allah is with me. The Prophet وسلم, when he was with his companion, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and they left Mecca when they were making hijrah to Medina, and there was a bounty on their heads. The amount of a hundred camels. Whoever brings Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever brings Abu Bakr as-Siddiq dead or alive will get this. So everyone went looking for them. So they stayed in a cave. And that when some of the pagans came looking for them. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq he said, Ya Rasulullah. If they just look down they will see us. They're right in front of us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the ayah. إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ إِذْ أَخْرَجُهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ثَانِيَ اثْنَيْنِ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا When he said to his companion, when they were in the... إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ If you do not help Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ Allah already helped him. Allah will help him. When they were in the cave, when he said to his companion, O Bakr al Sadiq, don't worry. This is Iman. In times of difficulty, he said, Don't worry. He said, Yeah, Abba Bakr, what do you think of two? 
Allah thalithahuma. Imagine you have two people. You're only by yourself and your companion. Everyone is against you, but Allah, Allah is with you. Allah is with you. This is this is ma'iyya khas lil mu'mineen. La tahzan inna Allah ma'ana. Allah is with us. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Allah is with us. This is the this is how you approach your, your life. Whatever happens to you, of good, of things that are difficult, of calamity, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. And this is the benefit of Iman. This is the benefit of having a heart that is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many, many other examples you find. So my brothers and sisters, upon us really is, is to start making changes today. Is to start connecting ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connecting ourselves with the Quran. To learn the Quran. To learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To learn Allah's names, Allah's attributes, to learn about your religion, to know that al Qiyama waqifuhum innahum masulun, you'll be stopped, you'll be questioned. Yom al Qiyama, it is a great day. Yom yafiru al maru min akhihi wa ummihi wa abi wa sahibatihi wa bani. The day that you, Yom yafiru al maru, the day a person will run away from their own brother, their own sister. You will run away from your own wife, your own children. Today you do anything for your children. Today you will do anything for your mother. You will do anything for your brother. But يوم القيامة يوم يفر المرء من أخيه You will run away from your own brother. وأمه وأبيه Your mother, your father You will say you run away from them. ليوم عظيم يوم يقوم الناس لرب العالمين A great day, a day where mankind will be resurrected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to remind ourselves of that day. We have to prepare ourselves. We have to know that this world, it is mata'ul hayatul dunya. It is uh, it is a life which is very short. Bal tu'thirun al hayatul dunya. Why do you choose this world that is very limited? Wal akhiratu khairun wa abqa, and the akhirah is better for you. The akhirah is everlasting. Hasn't the time come that we all go back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Regardless of how much sins you have done, regardless of your 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 background, regardless of what you have done in the past, know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is Ghafoor Rahim. Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive you of your sins if you go back to Him. Watubu ila Allahi jamiyan ayuha al-mu'min. Go back to Allah together, all of you. So upon us, my brothers and sisters, is to learn our religion, is to prepare ourselves and our families, and is to be a good example for all of people around us. Because Islam is something which is beautiful. Muslims are people that other people want to be with. Muslims are those that have good attitude, good manners. Muslims are those that they're trustworthy. Your manager knows that Muhammad or Hassan or Ali does not steal, will not cheat. This is, this is the sign that we have to show everyone around us that this is what makes us, uh, this is the best of nations. We're the best of people because of our qualities that we have. And that, uh, inshallah, we land over here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us, to guide our family members. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man afayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barak lana fi man a'afayt. Oh Allah, forgive us of our shortcomings. Oh Allah, forgive mm-hmm. our brothers and sisters that have passed away. Oh Allah, forgive our grandparents, our mothers, our uncles, our aunties. Forgive all of them. Oh Allah, make us from those that will be with the prophets Amen. and the uh, and the siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin in yom al qiyamah in jannah. Amen. Oh Allah, make us an example for our community. Amen. Oh Allah, we are weak. We need your help. Oh Allah, without your help, we will be in destruction. Oh Allah, we are lost. Guide us. Oh Allah, we are weak. Make us strong. Amen. Oh Allah, we we will sin, so forgive us. And oh Allah, make us die upon La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Amen. Ya Rabbi. Wa akhir da'wana anil hamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. It's been an honor for me uh, uh, for giving me your time. And uh, may Allah bless everyone's efforts, everyone's works. Let's keep up the good work, inshallah. Know that inshallah Allah will accept your good deeds and know that you know this is the best thing we could do for each other is to remind ourselves 
uh, about Allah's religion is to come together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to love each other for the sake of Allah. So it was an honor for me. And I, I thank you uh, for uh, having me and inviting me to this great uh, event. And shukran, Yamani Kotim Lodhuria, Darasaletu Meshia Hapa, Hutbaetu, Jazakallah Khairan. Muslim